Now that we've got AutoMap set up, let's look at some general concepts. Now, AutoMap is all based around the notion of mappings, and mappings determine which parameters in your DAW the controls on your hardware on the SL Mark II are going to control. And we can edit those in the Edit Mapping window. Now, with AutoMap and these DAWs like Logic or Pro Tools or Sonar or Digital Performer, the mappings were already intact. We can edit them, of course, if we want, but they're already set up in advance, and that's the beauty of AutoMap. So I'm going to go up here to the AutoMap window, and I'm going to go Mixer Plugin Mappings, and we can go Edit Mapping here, and this is the Edit Mapping window. And we can also call up the mappings directly for any of the specific plugins that might be instantiated in your session, and you can edit the mappings for any of those straight off like that. But that's the edit mapping window where we create and edit mappings. Now in AutoMap language, we have what's called the thing, and the thing refers to anything you can control using AutoMap. Plugins, DAW mixer controls, software instruments, external MIDI devices, these are all things, and things tell AutoMap which parameters are available for control, and then AutoMap is used to assign them to the controls on the SL Mark II. And we need to know this when we get into the mapping window, which we'll get into in the next videos. These are based on things. Now, there's a couple of different types of interfaces for AutoMap. There's what's called the AutoMap Huey Mixer, and Huey stands for Human User Interface, and it's a special type of MIDI protocol, and it's a special port that AutoMap makes available to your music software to allow control through this special protocol, and Pro Tools uses the AutoMap Huey Mixer. And there's also AutoMap MIDI, and that's a virtual software MIDI port that's used to control software or hardware. So it allows you to use your SL Mark II to generate standard MIDI messages. Now, in Logic, we can cable off some of these additional ports that we're not using. So we can go into the environment window over here, and in the layer menu, go into clicks and ports. And I've already done this. I've created a monitor object from under new just create a new blank monitor like that. And I've dragged the cables from the AutoMap propeller head, AutoMap Logic Mixer, AutoMap Huey, and drag their cables to here so that they don't get fed into Logic's sequencer engine. They're not necessary. So those are the basic general principles. And let's look at how the controls on the SL Mark II are mapped by default in these AutoMap templates. We have some buttons on the bottom here that are dedicated for use with AutoMap. We have Mixer, Instrument, and Effects buttons, which automatically switch to those mapped parameters. We have a User button for user mappings. We have a View button, and when we press it, it calls up on screen the Mapping Editor window here, which we looked at a moment ago when we got to it from under there. And we can open or close it specifically with that button. And we have a Learn button, which puts it into Learn mode. You can see this turn red. We'll look at learning different parameters in future videos for making our own mappings. But for now, let's jump to the mixer button. And there's some automatic control. Like for example, I can move the faders. And you'll see the faders move both over here and over here as I'm moving them on the controller. And watch as I move the next fader. Watch the pickup mode, how the fader doesn't move until the parameter is met that it's already at. See, I'm moving it here and it's not affecting the control. It'll only affect it when I move it near the top where the position of the fader already was. So that's the pickup mode in action. Now we also have pans over here. And again, you can see these mappings. They're moving the pan control here as well as here in Logic, which of course is where it's important. We can control sends. We can select solo buttons over here. We can use these for mute buttons. And you'll notice as I press each of these buttons, the rows become highlighted. And we can select the row just by pressing these row select buttons, and that'll change the mappings that are available. But just pressing the button changes it anyway. So let's take these out of solo mode. There we go. We have transport buttons. When we press this transport button, these transport buttons become active. <laughs> can rewind to the beginning, etc. We can work with instruments as well. For example, let me select a piano track. I'll just select that one and I'll move this out of the way. Let's scroll up and I'll open the piano. There we go. Let's try and shrink things so we can see things on screen. And I can jump to instrument mode here, but it did it already when I opened up the piano plugin. 
and we can move the controls and see them reflected here on the keyboard. The mappings were already made. For example, we can see here when I move this, it's going to move the rate knob over here. This one moves the tone knob, and again, the pickup mode determines that the control won't be affected until the value is reached here. We can control effects plugins as well. Let's select the snare drum track, for example, over here, and I'm going to press the effects button over here. And I can open up the plugin right from here if I want to. But let me close this for a moment. I'll just open it up manually over here. Snare, let's open up the channel EQ. And let's go back to view again and put that on screen. There we go. And now I can control the effects with for the EQ with that or control the parameters. For example, let's move this out of the way here. We're on the wrong plugin. Let's highlight that. There, it just updated. There we go, moving some of the parameters there. So as you saw, just by clicking on the plugin, it updated this. And we can control the various parameters with the various knobs and fader. And finally, we have a user button over here to show user mappings. There aren't any right now. And we can close that with that button and use the learn mode. So that's a little overview of AutoMap. See if more in the next video.